For a long time, I would start up my computer, open my code editor, and run my daily scripts manually, and watch as they requested, transformed, and moved the data around I needed. It worked fine, but I knew there was a better way. I just assumed it was complicated, but it's not. In this video, I'm gonna show you the easiest way to run your Python code on a cloud VPS, how to set up and manage that server, how to get your code on there, including how to handle Python's virtual environments, and how to run it automatically at the intervals that you need. But before we even think about running some code though, make sure you add this one thing, that if you don't, you'll have a world of pain trying to figure out what's going on when your code stops working, or even knowing that it's doing what it's supposed to do. I'm talking about logging, and it's vital to go through your script and add in any sensible logging output where it makes sense. I usually put it in places the script could fail and include a start and finish line so I know the whole thing executed properly. I'm not going to go into logging here in detail, but here's a simple logging config that will have a day, a timestamp, and a logging level output for you. If you're struggling, a good starting rule is to replace any print statements you made with logging.info. So for the server, I host all my code on DigitalOcean, but you can of course use any VPS provider that you prefer. If you want to do exactly what I am though, there's a link to DO below that will have some free credit attached to it. Something else that is mandatory when running web scrapers in the cloud is a set of high quality proxies. This video is sponsored by ProxyScrape. These are the proxies that I will use for this project and also the ones that I've been using personally in all my other projects too. We have access to high quality, secure, fast and ethically sourced proxies that are going to allow us to run code on a shared VPS and not get instantly blocked. There's 10 million plus proxies in the pool to use, all with unlimited concurrent sessions from countries all over the globe, enabling us to scrape quickly and efficiently. I'd recommend the residential proxies as these are the best option for beating any anti-bot protection on sites and with auto rotation or sticky sessions this is the simplest but most effective way to avoid our projects being blocked and allow us access to the data we need. It's only one line of code to add and then we let proxy scrape handle the rest from there. And any traffic you purchase is yours to use whenever as it doesn't ever expire, which is really nice. But there's definitely a case for data center proxies though and ProxyScrape has you covered there too. Unlimited bandwidth, 99% uptime, no rate limit, and IP authentication makes them a great option for the right use case. So if this all sounds good to you, go ahead and check out ProxyScrape at the link in the description below. Okay, let's get this code running in the cloud. So once you've created your DigitalOcean account and logged in, you want to come to create. I'm going to create a new droplet. Select the location, obviously that's nearest to you. We want Ubuntu, latest version. We can drop this down to the regular SSD and $6 a month. I'm going to use a password and then type in your password that you want to use here and then create your droplet. You can change the name if you want to. This is going to create everything. Now it's worth noting here that this is obviously a Linux machine. You need to have a basic understanding of Linux commands and we're gonna be using them in this video. If you run Windows, I'd highly recommend that you install and get used to using WSL, the subsystem for Linux. It will serve you well for years and years to come and it's definitely worth learning. So if you want to do that, you need to follow along. If you use Mac, you'll be fine. So this is finished now. I'll have an IP address. I'm going to hit copy and I'm going to come over to my terminal. I'm going to use SSH. I'm going to do root at and paste in the IP address. This might not be fully booted up yet, but I'm going to hit yes here and I'm going to type in my password. System is booting up, okay, and now we are in. Now the first thing that I'm gonna do that's just gonna make my life a little bit easier is I'm gonna install a couple of things because at the moment this is a very sort of raw terminal and there's not a lot of things you can do with it, especially when you're used to you know, your highly configured Linux terminal. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna do sudo apt install zsh. Again, you don't have to do any of this, but it makes your life easier. Get this installed. Then I'm gonna copy this string over from my other screen. This is from the OM, oh my ZSH is just a, an extra shell. And this is the install script. So I'm gonna install this. I'm gonna set it to my default. Now you could end up with a little bit of a problem um, with things not working properly. So what you wanna do is export X term like this. You see I've got some issues like so. Now we have access to all of the commands. So I'm gonna do sudo uh, apt install, it just makes my life much easier. I'm just gonna install NeoVim. Again, I need a code editor because we're gonna have to do some mild code editing. Again, this is all optional. If you wanna use Nano and you don't need ZSH or anything like that, you can just skip this section. But 
you know, this is a droplet that you can have for a while, you want to make it comfortable to use. So now I'm going to use NeoVim to edit my ZSH config, ZSHRC, and I'm going to come to the bottom and I'm going to create this X term export here. So now I'm going to save and exit out of this, which just means whenever I log in, I can clear the screen, I have, uh, you know, I can go back up, etc, cetera, etc. Cetera. So if you don't want to do any of that, that's fine. Pick up from here if you do and do sudo apt update because we want to update our system. This is very important because you know security, etc. Cetera, etc. Cetera. So sudo apt upgrade tells us there's 37 packages. So I'm going to let this run and I'll I'll come back to you once it's done. So we're going to reboot this later. We're going to install a few other things first. So again, sudo apt install and we're going to want to do python3 pip because we want to install pip on our machine so we can you know install python packages and then python 3.12 vmv and then that should be it this is just basically so we can create our virtual environments and then use pip to install packages into those virtual environments okay so that's done so now i'm going to reboot the machine just type reboot and it's going to close my connection and I'm just going to wait a few seconds and then try and reconnect. Uh, it's probably strictly not needed, but always worth doing. And we're back in and everything's working. So from here, we want to create a folder for our code. So I'm going to do CD into my home directory with the squiggly little line. We're already in it. I'm going to do make the projects. I'm going to call this Alpine and then projects like so. I'm going to cd into it. This is where we're going to put this specific project. Obviously, you can have multiple ones on here. We are going to handle virtual environments. Don't worry. Maybe Python 3-M, VMV, VEMV. And we'll create our virtual environment and we'll be ready to push our code onto into this folder. So let's activate it. Source VEMV bin activate. And we're ready to go here. Now, there's a few different ways that you can push code onto your droplet. The best option is using Git and GitHub because obviously when you want to update your code, you can update it, you can edit it on your local machine, update your Git repo, and then pull it back down. However, I'm going to show you a different way. We're just going to copy the code directly with SCP. I think it's called Secure Copy from our, from our host machine to our target machine. It's very easy, very quick, and you know, it's nice and simple to do. Again, if you're going to do this a lot, use Git, it's going to be much better for you. I'm going to come back over to my actual desktop. We'll do SCP and the files we want to copy over, aptk and our requirements.txt. This is the actual list of the packages we need to install. You could do it manually. I've just done it in a text file. Now we do our, our root at, and I need the, UR, the IP address for this again. Paste that in there. Then we do colon. Then we do our squiggly line projects and Alpine, like so. And it's going to ask us for the password. And it's done. So if I come back to our uh, droplet, we now have those two files here. And we can do pip3 install the requirements.txt. Oh, we need to do uh, dash r. And this is going to install everything that I need for this project to run. And to confirm that, I'm going to do Python 3. And I'm just going to make sure that it runs and it is and we can see right away that they have all of this nice logging here which is going to be saved for us so I'm going to stop this because there's one other thing that we're going to need to do and that's to add in our proxy string if we come to the actual uh, file and I go to proxy we can see here that I'm saving the proxy in a, into a um, environment variable on this droplet. Now you can put your proxy string directly into the code if you want to. I wouldn't do that. I'd keep it as an environment variable personally. That's how I manage all of mine. Now to do that, we want to come back to our ZSH file. So I'm going to CD back out here because it's going to be in this directory and we'll do mvim zshrc. Now to create a virtual environment, to create a environment variable, well, we already created this one, we use export, and then we give it the name, and I called mine sticky proxy because I'm using one of the ones that auto-rotates um, 
every five minutes, I think I said, or three minutes, and then you put the proxy string in here. I'm just gonna put mine in, and obviously I don't wanna show you it because this is my actual proxy that I, that I do use. So now that's done, you need to source the file. So we'll do source uh, zshrc, which basically kind of just refreshes this file. And now to show the string, just so you can see that it's working, you just type dollar sign and then whatever you called it, and it should give you this string back up here. He says there's no such file or directory. That's because I was trying to do something with it, but I'm just verifying that it's there. So now we can go back to our project file over here, activate this again, and we're good to go. Now, when we want to run this, we're going to use cron. I'm going to talk about that in just a second, but first of all, I'm going to create a shell script to actually run this um, code. Now you don't have to do this, but I've just found this is to be the easiest way. And what I mean is that it's basically, you know, a bash script that's going to go to the directory, it's going to activate the virtual environment, it's going to run the code, and then it's going to deactivate the virtual environment. And this is a really nice way. So if you run multiple projects that have different virtual environments because they have different requirements, you can just create a shell script for each one bash script and then have it run via cron and it's all nice and separate. So I'm gonna create a new file and we'll call this one alpine.sh. And we need to do a couple of things here. We need to start this off with our bash script. So we will do the shebang line and then we do bin uh, bash like so, bin bash. Then we want to say that our path is gonna be equal to, and I'm just gonna type this out um, this is just so it kind of knows where to find um, bash so it can actually work. And these are a few different places that it can be, which is why they're separated by a colon. Uh, I think if you copy this string, you should be absolutely fine. So what we want to do now is we want to activate the virtual environment. Now, we, to do that, we did source. So we want to do, we, actually, what we'll do first is we'll cd into the directory because we'll go into our project directory. So we'll do cd and we'll go projects alpine. And from here, we want to source VMV bin activate. Then we want to run the Python file. So we do Python 3, and it was aptk, I think, .py. And then we want to deactivate, deactivate the virtual environment. So I think that should be fine. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to CD back here into my home folder. I'm going to deactivate it. Oh, one other thing I forgot to do, I need to make this executable, chmod plus x to make it executable, projects alpine, alpine.sh. Cool. So now we can just run this file, and we should start to see our script running. And this just means, you know, you can run this, we can call this script from anywhere we are in our, in our, um, um, code in our in our file system so when cron runs it it runs it it's going to find the right directory it's going to run it and our code's going to run it's going to activate the virtual environment and then it will deactivate it at the end and everything will work fine for us so now that we know that that's going to work what we're going to do is we're going to do cron tab dash e now uh, it's not going to give me the access i don't know if i can run this with oh yeah near them. there we go perfect all right so this is our cron tab so i'm going to come to the bottom of this file and we're going to create a new line. Now I'm going to show, share with you a website called crontab.guru where you can choose the time. So the each star is a representation of when the code is going to run. I'm going to put star, 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 star for the moment. This is going to run it every minute because we want to see that it's actually working. So what we're going to do is we will go with our four star and then we'll do our project folder. So projects, alpine, and alpine.sh like so and then because our output is going to standard out instead of having that log file for you know each one we can just pipe it using the double arrows into a new file so we'll do projects alpine slash alpine.log and the last thing we need to do is this two into and one i think it's to do with the error logging I don't know exactly, all I know is that you need to do this. All right, so now that that's done, I'm gonna hit save, I'm gonna come out of this, and we're gonna check a different file now real quick. So we're gonna check our var system log. So I'm gonna do this, we wanna do, I don't know if it's not in this folder, oh yeah, var uh, log syslog. 
So if we go to the bottom of this file, we can see here that our cron tab has now been updated. We updated it to run every minute. So what I want to do is basically refresh this or you know have a look at this file every minute and just check to see that it is, oh, I don't want to edit it though, it's running. So I'm going to do cat bar log syslog. This is just so I can see that it's working. So we can see uh, when did I execute it? When did I change it at 14.50.01? So in about a minute or so, it will run and we'll see that it had indeed run every minute. And we'll see that it did indeed run every minute. And we go, we can see that at 14.51.01, it's run our project. So let's go to our project folder, CD um, projects Alpine and we should have alpine.log and if we cat out alpine.log it's going to have some information now obviously it didn't get all the way through before you know it's it's got to a certain point but we don't want to run this every minute because you know, it takes longer than a minute but we can see that it is now running and it is now working so the last thing i want to do is cron tab dash e again so let's update this so it runs zero four this is going to run it at 4 a.m every morning so what you need to do is now just leave this and away you go, it's done. Now I know that I've covered quite a lot in this and we've been going for probably about 20 minutes, but I think I've been talking through as much of it as quickly as, as in detail and as quickly as I can. But you know, once you know what you're doing, getting this set up to run some code takes a couple of minutes at best and it's super easy to do, it's very reliable. In fact, it's more reliable than running your own home server, which I actually do as well, because you know, there's no, if you have a power cut at home, it goes off. If the, if something goes wrong with your hardware at home, you need to fix it. But having, you know, paying $6 a month to run, you know, multiple scripts in the cloud on DigitalOcean or similar, you know, it's a no brainer. It's up 99.999% of the time and you have very, very little errors. I've got a droplet, the same one. I think it's been going for five years, doing a few things every day. I just let it get on with it, nice and easy. I hope you've enjoyed this video. If you wanna see, how I can write the code to then scrape data every day. You want to watch this video next.